welcome to session 38 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. I am Brianna and I am the dyer, designer, and human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this YouTube channel. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome. And if you're returning from another video, thanks for coming to hang out today. It is Tuesday, April 16th, and it is quite late in the day. It is 6.12, which means we are battling light outside right now. I have a light on my stand where I record from that I put my phone on. Um, and I don't normally turn that on because I don't think it gives the most accurate color representation, but I know we're not going to make it through this podcast without the light. So we have it on for now and I'm going to be as quick as possible today to get through this. Um, I'm not wearing any knits today because it is so warm out. I was wearing my Comfort Fade Cardi and my Quit Your Whining color way fade kit. <laughs> Let me show you. Um, Cause I really love this one. It is my first and favorite Comfort Fade Cardi, I think. I, I love it. Um, it is, Four beautiful colors. Um, and I had this on this morning, but it got way too hot. So I took it off and we're just having a cozy, comfy day because lots of work has been done today out in the dye studio, on the computers. But that's all life stuff, so I'll save that for another time. Since I'm not wearing anything knitted today, we could just jump into admin and start there. We still don't have any knit alongs going on, but like I said, don't worry, one is coming very soon. And I have two announcements to make. One is just a reminder, if you've been here for the last two videos, you've heard it already, but one is brand new. So it is New Jersey Will Walk this week, later this week. By the time you see this, New Jersey Wool Walk will already be going on. I'm gonna try and get this out on Wednesday, but we'll see. But I'm gonna have two trunk shows during Wool Walk. I am so, so excited and I cannot wait to see some of you, hopefully, at one or both of them. First, I will be at Grace and Pearl on Thursday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm bringing so much yarn. <laughs> and then I will be at um, what was previously Balzac, which is now going to be the Creative Knot in Ocean Grove on Saturday, April 20th. Uh, again, I think around the same time frame, time frame, and I am so excited. So, so, so excited. I will be bringing all of the cereal box collection. I will have some beachy colors, some like staples of mine that are tried and true. People love them every time I bring them anywhere. I'm going to bring a bunch of mohair and surrey that I had multiples of, which I thought was really fun. I'm going to be bringing a ton of sock blanks because those are always super fun for things like this for trunk shows. And I feel like before I get to trunk shows, I always get really nervous and end up grabbing a bunch of stuff on my shelves to make sure I have enough yarn, especially because I have two this weekend. I want to make sure I have enough of what you all want. So I'm so excited. If you're going to be around at either of those places, Thursday or Saturday, let me know. Drop a comment below. Tell me your name. Let me know where you're going to be so I can make sure to keep an eye out for you. And if you happen to stop by, definitely come say hi. Even if you're not buying yarn, it's so much fun to talk to viewers. I'll bring some stickers with me so folks can grab one of those. And yeah, I'll be so excited to see you all. I, I'll save the yarny things for later. So let's just wrap up admin there. No, online. We're just going to do it in the shop now because it's quick and easy and we're right here. Uh, April clubs are still in the shop. We have Believe from Ted Lasso. I don't have them up here. That's why I'm not going to wait till later. We have Believe from Ted Lasso and Zion National Park for my travel inspired from the Open Road Club. We have Moana inspired, 
countdowns for July. 15, 30 day or single day options. Those are getting dyed up very, very soon. So if you want one, grab one now. We also have October Beetlejuice inspired boxes, 13, 30 or single day options on my fingering weight, Sunfish, my DK420 or a fiber option. And I am so excited about those. They're in the shop too. Folks are already starting to scoop them up, so make sure to grab those if you want one. And then last but not least, if you're watching this, it will be at least Wednesday, which means this cereal box collection is live. So, so excited. I'm loving these colorways so much. I am already using so many of them. I already have plans for the rest of them. And I am so excited to see how excited all of you are for some of these colorways. If you have a favorite colorway, drop it below. Tell me your project plans. I'm super excited to see what everyone grabs and makes with these colorways. Can I say excited or colorways one more time? I don't think so. I say we call it and let's talk about some of the things I finished because if I'm being honest, it feels like these two things are a bit of a stretch. First, we have an item that technically is finished finish, although you've already kind of seen it. Um, and it's not a knitting bow. I have no knitting finish objects. Okay, I'll just say it. I'll say it, elephant in the room, I have not finished any item in my knitting, but I have finished this giant, giant skein that's bigger than my head. I have a tiny head, but it's still really big. But this is the three ply I showed you on the bobbin last week. And look how cool it is. It is so green. It is so green, which I like. It's like that acidy green. Um, but it's just so, so different than what I thought it was going to be. The blue, I feel like, got swallowed up in this. But I really want to cast it on and see what it looks like. So, this is 300 grams in one skein. It was far too large for me to actually wind up. So, I kind of just twisted it and tucked it into itself. And I think this is going to get wound up, skeined up caked up, I should say, very soon and maybe will be my next sort of mindless selfish project. I should do it sooner than later because it's going to be summer soon. It'll be next, but look how much it bloomed. It really is beautiful. I think it's a solid sport DK weight, which is exactly what I was going for. And yeah, I'm excited to see the specs on it. The second thing I've kind of finished, it's only half object. And to be honest, I considered postponing filming for a little bit longer so that I could finish this. And I realized we're losing light. You have lots of stuff to do. You don't have time for this nonsense, Brianna. But I finished one of my socks. One of the socks that you've seen in previous weeks that was just supposed to be my no pressure don't worry about it you'll just work on it when you can mindless knitting and a thing that I'm realizing about this is that I don't do well with projects like that when I have something on my needles I want it finished even if it's a there's no timeline don't worry about this once I got the heels done I was like I have like no knitting left I just want to finish this so I was like let me get through the legs so that I can get through that yarn. And then I was like, I only have the cuffs left. Let me just finish this. I'm not saving this for a movie. So we have a finished socks. sock for Michael. This is my ginger cookies colorway on my sunfish base and a leftover like charcoal gray also on my sunfish base. And he has a 10 and a half, size 10 and a half men's foot. I actually knit one of these socks way too long and then work the entire gusset last week you saw that and I realized this is too long so I frogged back the entire gusset and like 15 almost an inch I think 
um, from the foot and then re-knit the entire gusset. I don't remember if it was this one or the other one, but I finished one. So that is the closest thing to a finished object you're going to get today, and I hope you're okay with it. I have been doing lots of knitting. I have been working on lots of things. I've just been working on lots of things, so nothing got totally done. And I've also been spending a lot of time in the dye studio and the yarn room downstairs, so I just haven't had as much knitting time as I had in previous weeks. But let's talk about some of the other things I've been working on because like I said, there are a bunch. <music> First, let's wrap up the other half of the hoe you just saw there. Um, and this is, mm, I love this well wash bar so much. Blackberry, sage and blackberry, stuff woolens. Um, this is, took my little sheepy off. Oh, so blown out. A little sheepy. And this is the other sock. Look how far I am. I'm halfway through the ribbing. I think I did 20 rounds on this one. I should count and make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Isn't this the riveting content you all wanted? But this is going to be done in a minute. I love this chocolate chip cookie charm. And yeah, I used all of ginger cookies. I still have a bit left, maybe 20 grams or so left of this like dark grayish black. So I will put it back in my leftovers bin and use it or probably more heels, toes, and cuffs on another sock. And this is, as always, in my horse feather fiber bags. So lightweight, smells so good. Perfect size for a little sock or something portable. And this will probably be coming with me for the rest of the summer, because I love this bag so much. So that's whip number one. Whip number two is something you've also seen that I've made a decent dent in, but honestly, I didn't get as much on it done as I thought I would, probably because I put so much work into these and some other things here. If I had only focused on this, it definitely would have been done. I'll, I think I also have another reason why I've been sitting on this a little bit, but I'll talk about it in a second. This is in my beautiful sister Heather style bag that goes over your arm like sort of bunny bag style, super cool. And inside of it, I have my, this is how I like to use this bag, um, kind of like a yarn bowl now. I have my Follow Your Nose, mm -mm -mm, blown out Fruit Loops colorway on my Sunfish base and my headphones that are constantly on. Why are they always on? That's so frustrating because then they're always dead. Um, I have wool sniffer in here, which is such a nice scent. And my project, which is on very tiny needles. So it looks really small. I promise it's not as small as it looks. I'm making a 32 size bust. It's just scrunched up. But this is where you saw it last, if you see that banana right there. So I have put several inches on the body, maybe three or four inches on the body. And I put on a neckband and two little armhole ribbing sections. So I wanted to make sure I'm using as much yarn as I can for this project. Um, and I wanted to have the entire top finished, then I would also get a good sense of fit. And now look how fun the pooling is now that we're going around and around. Um, it's almost like micro striping, which is super cool. Michael's downstairs if you just heard him sneeze. Um, but the plan is to do a few more inches in the round. I have a good amount of yarn left, probably 55 grams, I, I believe, somewhere around there, 50 grams. 
is to work until I have about 20, mm, 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 maybe 20 grams left, mm, maybe 25 grams left straight. And then I am adding shaping to the bottom of this and it's going to be really cool. So the top is going to be shorter and then I'm going to use short rows to shape it. Um, so the back, like, so it goes like this, longer and around for the back, sort of a high low look. I'm super excited about it. And I think I've also been sitting on this because I know once I'm done with the body, I need to have the math done. But this is quite silly because the math will be very easy. It's very easy. I've already kind of done it. I need to know the total number of stitches divided by a certain number and then figure it out from there. It's very easy. I'm just sitting on it. So I think I will do this tonight. My plan is to finish this second sock as soon as I'm done with this podcast that I'm going to make dinner um, and then do the math for this so I can be mindlessly knitting on this during our movie watching tonight, which is going to happen at home instead of the theater, which I'm excited for. Um, so that is whip number two. Whip number three is another knitting whip, and it is one you have not seen yet, but I'm very, very excited about it. So I have another project back in my Tanny Casey bag, and I love this one. This one's also probably going to stay out throughout most of the summer and warm weather. It's a little larger, um, which is perfect. I feel like some of my summer bags get very tiny, but this is perfect. And in it is a totally new whip that you have not seen before. I will show you, grab the one skein that I'm using, um, the yarn, oh, oh, so blown out. So this is my Desert Bloom colorway on Surrey. And this is one of the exclusive colorways that I created for the Cloudscape sweater scarves. And this one is for Courtney of I Love Tinderbox. You can see it has like greens, pinks, mauves, tans, oranges. Um, it's really, really beautiful. Although it's getting quite blown out here. And I'm using it to make a Cloudscape sweater scarf. I needed something mindless and I needed something on shorties this past weekend. I'll talk more about it in life stuff. But I had nothing that fit that bill. So I decided time to cast on. So before um, we headed home for the weekend, I just wound up three skeins of this and I am going to make this for my mom for Christmas. She has really, really wanted one. And this feels like her color palette. I wasn't so sure. So the other day, actually, when I was working on it, just left it on the table because I knew she would say something about it. Usually yell at me to put my stuff away. But she goes, oh, this yarn is really pretty. Is this the yarn for that scarf that you've been posting? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, it's beautiful. I was like, thanks. So I'm glad she likes it. And again, blown out, but I have done several inches on the cuff, which is just one by one rib. It looks a little different than the pattern. I'm doing the knit version, which is again, Knititude's Cloudscape Sweater Scarf, the knitted version. Um, she actually works it flat and then seams the cuff. And I was in no place to be doing that. I just didn't feel like it. I know seaming adds some structural integrity here. And I know that the core of this yarn is silk which adds some of that integrity back in. And the nice thing about not having to seam is one, not having to seam, two, getting to work in the round, and then three, it is fully reversible. So I know one of the ways that Courtney likes to wear this is to actually flip the one sleeve inside out and like twist it so the front looks like a Mobius, not just crisscrossed over each other, but like twisted. And now there will be no seam. To do that. I know with fluffy yarn you can't really see the seam anyway, but I'm really excited about this. I had to do many inches of ribbing here. My gauge is on when it is stretched lengthwise and not knitwise or not widthwise, which makes sense um, for ribbing. So I'm just making sure to keep it stretched this way 
not stretch it out too much width wise and when I block it um, I know it'll be awesome look at the pooling too it's so much fun and it's really subtle but this will be my new mindless has no deadline will get done when it gets done project although we know how that goes for me so I'm anticipating that this might be done by the end of April um, but once the cuff is done then it is truly working back stocking it flat knitting purling pretty mindless I'll be able to do that mostly in the dark movie knitting it'll be a little tricky with the surrey being slippery with metal needles but again lots of stuff happening in the next week or two where i'll just need mindless knitting and this will be perfect for that once i have my tank done because that is also mindless knitting once that tank is done this will be next it will be okay the other two things yes Two things I've been working on are actually not knitting at all. They are spinning. One of them you've seen and one of them you have not. So let's start with the one you've seen. So this is in a Nomadic Stitches bag. And inside it is, yes, my Bosworth Drop Spindle and my Melanated Boho Bay Fiber Braid. Half, half. This is... Half of a half. This is a quarter of a braid that I've been spinning since Rhinebeck. Um, I have not obviously been spinning it consistently because it is only four ounce braid, but I had stopped for a really long time. And I stopped for a long time, I noticed, because I was using my wheel a lot. And that is just so addicting. But I also stopped because I had stopped. I was at a point where the fiber was not attached to my bobbins, to my spindle. Um, I was focusing on other things. Sorry, I feel like I just, see now that it's started, all I want to do is spin. I was gonna say, I was just tightening that up, but here we are, now I'm spinning. Um, now that it's started, it's gonna get done. I just, if I sit too long with something at a stage where it's not ready to pick up and go, it doesn't always get done. So now I know I set myself up for success. I spun on it a little bit this weekend and I'm going to take it with me again this weekend while I'm out of my house for a little bit. So I'll get some work done on that and this will be done in no time. And I can finally attach it to the other bobbin that I have these single plies waiting on and then ply the two together. It has been far too long. Too long. Too long. The last whip that I have is a spinning whip and it's on my e-spinner which is right over here. So let me unplug it from the battery and grab it because we have a new bobbin. Um, I believe, is this done? Oh, if this wasn't done, this should have been in my FO section. Darn it. That's okay. Um, this is a white tweed wool um, that is two ounces from Green Goat Ranch. Um, and it is a Vintage Monster Mummy Plying Pair. Um, and I plied up two ounces of the bare fiber. And now I'm working on the other two ounces of the dyed fiber, which is an American Rambouillet, which you know I love. And I've done half of it already. I'm Maybe I've done like almost three quarters of it, two thirds of it, I would say. And this is all that I have left. Once that's done, this two ounces will be completed. It'll rest and I'll apply these together. And it's super like soft and subtle. Some of it um, looks almost so bare. Oops, I just broke my fiber. Um, let's make sure it doesn't go back in there. Some of it is super soft and bare. Some of it is a bit more saturated like this section. And I'm really excited. I think this is gonna be something for me. And I think it might be a hat, maybe brioche. We'll see. I'm really loving the Tweety Bits. I wasn't loving it so much while I was spinning it, 
but I'm loving the rambouille and that will be done tonight, tomorrow, we'll see. I've been doing Andrew Mary's 100 day of spinning long draw challenge and that has been really motivating me to get spinning every day. I am finding that spinning for 15 minutes is just not something that happens. Um, if I'm spinning, it's at least for half an hour and I'm loving every second of it. Today, I actually got started spinning because I had a meeting at 9.30 and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to spin for a little bit this morning, spun for about 40 minutes and it was the best way to start my day. I really want to be a morning person. I really, really want to wake up early and be spinning or knitting, but it's just not who I am. Um, it's just not who I am. So those are all of the whips that I have. We talked admin, we talked in the shop, we talked trying to finish objects, whips, and now let's talk about a little bit of life stuff. Maybe I'll work on my sock while we chat. <laughs> This actually feels like a bad idea to be chatting about life and knitting at the same time because I think what's going to happen is I'm going to be enjoying my knitting and just get kind of rambly. So should I do it? No. Am I going to? Yes, because I want to finish this cup. Anyway, what has happened in the last week or so since we chatted? We went to the movies. We saw the first omen, not the last omen. Last week I said the last omen and it I don't know what I was thinking of, Late Night with the Devil. And I mix it up, but it was the first omen. It was good. Um, it wasn't so scary. I am worried that I'm losing my scare factor. I'm exposing myself to too many scary things. And I'm becoming desensitized to it because it wasn't that scary. But there we are. Um, I We've been watching House of Dragon, House of the Dragon, and we're almost finished with season one. I think maybe we have an episode or two left. Um, so we watched a little, I think, last week. I've been, again, spending a lot of time out in the dye studio and in the arm room downstairs, so we haven't been doing as much relaxing and hanging out as we otherwise would. But I'm excited to get back to that soon. Um, so we watched a little bit of that. I finished reading The Turn of the Key, and we had our book club chat about it. That was on Wednesday. I liked the book. I really liked how it ended. Um, and I thought it was a good book. It was a slow burn, but I definitely am interested in reading more Ruth Ware. Just not right now. I already started another book. I picked up, I had in my Kindle already. I bought most of her books when I decided I loved her so much. Um, I'm reading Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda, who I love. And going from Ruth Ware to this is wild because I think it took me like a week to get 50, 40, 50% into the Ruth Ware book. And this is taking me like three days and I'm well into this book. I'm loving it so much, even though I'm not spending that much time reading it, it is flying. Um, we... Thursday, what happened? Friday, my best friend got married, Jenna Rose. I've talked about her a little bit on here. You've seen her in our Soup Saunter video because she officiated our wedding and has come out to Bethlehem to hang out with us and we went on a Soup Saunter and she learned to knit and she got married on Friday. It was so, so much fun. We saw a bunch of college friends who I haven't seen in 10 years, in a decade since we graduated. Um, and it was amazing. It was so awesome to just see them and like pick up right where we left off. Um, and remember inside jokes and chat about things and catch up. It was really, really fun. Um, so we did that Friday night. I did so much head banging. I hurt my neck. <laughs> my neck was really sore. And then I was taking so much Advil all weekend long. My stomach started hurting. So I was icing it and heating it and... It finally is feeling better days later. Saturday, we woke up, we had brunch, we said goodbye to everyone at the wedding, and then we drove home to New Jersey to help my sister do a little bit of moving. 
that she's doing, just moved some furniture actually from her old apartment. Um, it's not going into her new apartment, it's going back to my mom's house. So we helped bring some of that back to her house, hung out, um, went to this awesome diner, spot by us, and then we went bowling Saturday night with my mom. And it was so much fun. I love bowling. I was also very sore. My legs, my neck, we danced all night at the wedding. And um, I broke out, we all broke out a few of uh, Just Dance moves. And if you play Just Dance and you know Rasputin, I was doing the like from the floor dance. So my quads were killing me, my neck was killing me. I took a nap on Saturday, which if you know me, I never do. And Michael woke us up and was like, we gotta go. Your mom's going to the bowling alley, we gotta meet her. So we went bowling, it was super fun. I actually did very well, which was exciting. Um, I brought my own ball. I have a ball from when I was little. Um, otherwise, I have a really hard time finding a bowling ball because I have very tiny hands. Um, but we did that until I was sore and we ran out of time. We went home, we watched a little bit more House of the Dragon. And then Sunday, we woke up, I was still sore, and we headed into the city to, to see the last game of the Knicks season with my dad. He has tickets, he's a ticket holder. My sister goes with him at least once a week, two games, and he had four tickets, he had two open. He asked me and Michael if we wanted to go see the last game of the season. We said, sure. We went, it was such a good game. They were basically tied with a bunch of other teams at this point in the season before going into playoffs. And this game, along with a bunch of other games that were happening on Sunday, were going to determine all of the seeds for where people were going to land. So it was a big game, it was an important game. We could either take second place or we could drop to like sixth or something like that. And this game, we fought tooth and nail, literally into overtime and we beat the Bulls, we the Knicks, beat the Bulls 120 to 119 with like 1.2 seconds left in overtime. It was a wild game. It was really fun and I was so sore. So when we got done, we headed back to New Jersey, hung out with my mom for a little bit, saw Rocco, which was amazing. I feel like I haven't seen him in so long. Um, but we saw Rocco and had dinner and then we got some Dairy Queen because it was so beautiful out and sunny and someone, I think my mom was like, do you think Dairy Queen's open? It was, it's around the corner from our house. So we went, we brought Rocco, he loved it. He loved it so much. At first he didn't really like, he was kind of confused about the soft serve and that it was for him. And then once we like put it on our finger and gave it to him, he was, he was gonna eat this whole thing. And it was way too much ice cream for him. It was like a full serving. So he loved it, it was so much fun. And then we had to drive back to Pennsylvania. We get in the car, it was downpouring, like torrential downpour storms the entire ride, which was not so fun for Michael who was driving. And then, yeah, I've just been doing a lot of dying, finishing up our last eye day for the trunk shows was yesterday. So this morning was rinsing, washing, hanging, Last night was a lot of winding, writing tags, getting everything ready, getting everything inventoried. I'm gonna put that um, online tonight, online on a, on a Google Doc so I can access it when I'm at the trunk shows tonight. And then just a bunch of knitting, pattern edits, updates, things like that. It is still so warm out. Michael um, mowed our lawn yesterday cause he had not yet and it was getting out of hand between the warm weather and all the rain we'd had. So he finally got out there and did it. And I know he hates that, but it means it's warm and sunny and it's a season that makes me very, very happy. Um, we were just saying we need to get some things in our planter box and our garden boxes outside, but we haven't done it yet because um, we were still having some frost and weird weather, but it seems like maybe we're good to go at this point. And I think that's all I got. I'm getting rambly now because I'm just knitting and chatting, knitting and chatting. I'm going to go make dinner. I'm going to go make some pattern edits. I'm going to finish this cuff because I'm pretty close. And 
then I'm going to go prep some yarn as we do for a trunk show and for the yarn release tomorrow, aka today. This is so exciting. I'm really excited for it. So there are lots of things to prep, lots of things to do, and I'm going to go get to it. I really wanted to finish this row uh, to tell you how many rows I've knit while we were just sitting here chatting. Because wouldn't it be great if I was ready for a bind off? I don't think I have, but I might have done four, three or four. Let's see. I was at 10, right? One, two, three, four. Thirteen. Okay, I'm getting close. Oh, how cute. I'm getting close, but I'm going to go do all the things I need to do. And I will talk to you next week. Take care of each other. Bye.